Hey guys, want to make the most out of your shop space? Got a DeWalt table saw? Maybe you want to add a router table or some storage? Well, stick around because I'm going to show you how we take this and transform it down to this. So this video is going to be a little different from the videos I've made before. I made this thing well before I started making YouTube videos, but I've been getting quite a few questions on it. So I thought I'd throw this video together to clear a few things up. I'm going to try and keep this pretty short, so just remember that the pause button is your friend. So when I decided I wanted to make a stand or whatever you want to call this thing for my table saw, I decided there was a few more things that I wanted it to incorporate. First of all, I didn't have a router table. And I wanted a router table for those times when a router just doesn't do it. Secondly, I wanted it to take up a small amount of shop space. Thirdly, I wanted it to be easy to move because I wanted to be able to work on it outside because I have some large projects that are, quite frankly, easier to do outside. And finally, I want it to be stable. Sometimes that's hard to incorporate in something like this. So you can see here the reason I got the table saw in the first place. I needed to rip a ton of strips. So that led to a few things that I wanted to add to it. First of all, a zero clearance insert. Secondly, um, because the strips are so skinny, I needed a fence that sat very close to the face of the table. And thirdly, in feed and out feed because these were extremely long strips and this helped make more stable cuts. For in feed and out feed tables, I wanted something really solid. So I took some aluminum angle, a spacer block, and bolted them through the rails. I used square nuts on the inside to allow it to tighten itself down as I just simply screwed in the screws from the outside. Then I put some T-nut inserts on the top side of the melamine that were countersunk and tightened them down. This made a semi-permanent solution that I could simply detach later. The stand was mostly made out of 2x4s and I used pocket holes to connect the joints. Back here I've got one 2x6 to allow for a little more clearance for the casters that I ended up putting on here. And other than that, everything was square cuts except for a couple bevels I put onto the 2x4s to make it a little more aesthetic and keep the sharp edges away from anybody's knees or catch on something as they were walking by. So there's four holes in the frame of the table saw. I just used those to put lag bolts through and then I put some steel and rubber washers on it and screwed that right down through the half inch plywood. This made a really stable base and then it made construction way easier. Moving on to the router table edition now, I just used some simple 2x8s to mount to the plywood and then on the underneath side I used some shims as you can see here to make everything perfectly flat and level with the table saw surface itself. I used some pocket holes to connect the 2x8s with the melamine with some angle brackets and then I went ahead and used aluminum angle which I mounted to the table saw by drilling a couple holes. Now this was the only permanent change I made to the table saw itself, but I felt like it was worth it for the stability I got out of it. So you may have wondered what the aluminum angle for on the outside is, but that actually holds in the router plate and it does an awesome job. Here you're just gonna route down to the exact same size as the router plate and make a cutout that your router can fit through. So I use Rockler's Phenolic router plate here it worked awesome for my router. I used router plate B, but they've got a router plate for practically any router out there on the market. I'll leave a link in the description below so you guys can pick up one for yourselves. So if I'm using the table saw and I decide that I want to go over to my router, all I do is pull the lever, move this over, lock it in place, grab my secondary fence that I created, which isn't perfectly center, and boom, I'm off to the races. All I gotta do is take this vacuum port, plug it right into here, boom, set. Now you can just get straight in here, loosen everything up, put it right on there. So this skill router I have works awesome. I can get in here to change out a bit with my wrench easily. I can get to the power switch, and I can also access the variable speed without anything being in the way. This fence also works really well if I want to cut a board. So I just raise my blade, move the thing over to where I want, the fence over to where I want, lock it down, and 
I'm set. So if I'm using my saw and I need to get to something, all I gotta do is open my drawer. Now I got everything right here. So I think this is actually the first drawer I ever made. Yeah, I know it doesn't look awesome. I actually tried to use a finger joint jig that I made and it doesn't look great, but hey, it gets the job done. This thing works both in the stored and upright position. I love this thing because everything I need to use is right there. And it's a super efficient way to use my shop space. So this fence add-on is pretty simple. It's just got a cut out in the middle and then it's boxed in right there to allow for the vacuum port to do its thing and extracts the chips through the mouse hole. I cut a slot or a dado on the top of both sides to accept Rockler's T-Track. This is awesome for holding jigs, stop blocks, or feather boards. One more thing I did do is drill and tap holes in the top of the fence to hold down the auxiliary fence if needed. So say you're done using your fence and you want to remove it, you just pull up the lever on both sides and the whole thing just comes straight off there. And then you go grab your crosscut sled or whatever jig you may be using and you're set. One other thing that I really like about this configuration is that the cord for the router actually fits in the same place is the cord for the table saw so you don't have cords flying around everywhere when you're trying to pack this thing away so if you're gonna make one of these there's a couple additions that you could add to it that I haven't gotten around to yet first of all you could put handles on here with hinges that would hinge in and out and be out of the way when you weren't transporting the thing back and forth secondly you could put runners on the drawer for it to be able to seat easier and you could also put a place to hold your tools such as bits or push sticks or uh, feather boards, anything like that that you would need when you're using this thing. And finally you could finish or paint it. You know I like the rough look and it's going in my shop so that's what I went with. So I made a set of plans for this if you guys would like some detailed instructions on how to make it. But if not, you guys would like to use this for inspiration, that's awesome too. Take a picture and hit me up on Instagram, I'd love to see it. Hey guys, so that's it for this one. I hope you found this useful. If you know somebody that could possibly use this, pass it along and uh, please share it. Also, if you would, hit the subscribe button if you're new here. I've got videos like these coming out for instructional and project-based videos where I'm actually building the project itself. The channel's growing really well. I'm super happy with the progress we've made so far. So thank you guys so much for your support. Please leave me some feedback on the video. Let me know if you like this style or you want something changed. I'd love to hear what you guys think. I'm always trying to improve the channel, so any feedback you can give me would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and have a good one. You didn't go good in your video, Dad. Really? Huh? You're doing a brilliant.